So right now, following leading cause of death for people ages 1 to 44, okay? They call this the youth, younger, ages 1 to 44. Cancer, heart disease, homicide, motor vehicles, suicide, and drug overdose. Historically, in 1980, up until 2000, drug overdose was last by mile. This data just came out by the CDC. I want you to take a look at this. Can you put this up? Take a look at this here, guys, on what's happened, okay? Look at HIV in 86. It goes up, boom, flat line. It's pretty much gone. They're not even tracking the stats anymore like they did before. Heart disease going slightly lower. You got cancer is around. Homicide is there. Accidents is gone lower. Look at these poisoning drug overdoses and the number. 50,000 and climbing. 50,000 and climbing. Okay. So when you see this, what do you think about, Tom? My mind goes to a couple different places. Where do you go when you see a stat like this as a parent? This scares the hell out of me. Um, and there is a story behind the story here that fentanyl is being intentionally shipped to this country in illegal drugs, and the nation's children are getting a hold of it, and they're just, they're, you know, they're dropping a tab, partying, and it turns out that it's laced. And that's what's going on here, and it's horrifying. And I don't think anybody wants to talk about it. When I see like this, it just underlines just why I have been so proactive so early with my kids because of the internet and everything that's happened so much earlier in life getting a hold of my girls before my parents got a hold of me because of what's out there and realizing it only takes one. Man, we used to talk in the late 80s. You look at HIV there. And so I graduated um, high school, early 80s. And so back then, Take a look at the HIV line. My parents used to say, you gotta be careful, it only takes one time and you can get HIV. It only takes one time you get HIV. And it was considered the death sentence back then before AZT, protease inhibitors, and all the things that build the cocktail so that people can live like Magic Johnson many, many, many decades. This, it only takes one and you're out. And it just scares the hell out of me. And, and Pat, I actually lost, uh, my mom knows this, I lost two friends, uh, mom, about a year ago. Uh, my friend Fu uh, Fuquan and my boy Rico, they were just hanging out. They trusted this girl. They were just at a house, you know, L.A. They're chilling. Uh, one of them had his girlfriend with them. Apparently, they all did just one little, you know, little bit of cocaine. All three dead. The other girl OD'd, but she survived. And this is, and I think we talked about it last podcast, Pat. This is, and you said, because I'm, yeah, some of it's coming over the border. But one of the main ones that fentanyl is coming in here is from China, okay? So China's winning, bro. They, we, I mean, we owe them all this money. They're making uh, not the money that they owe us, but uh, that we owe them. They're making money on the fentanyl, and they're killing Americans. So th it's, it's a win-win for them, and no, but that's, that's not a big deal to people. I, Adam, you spend a, you're a great uncle. You spend a lot of time with your, not a great uncle, meaning he's got, you know, I'm but he's a great yeah. uncle. Very good. Yeah, yeah. not an old yeah. uncle, great yeah. uncle. Yeah. Robert, and you, you have a nephew. That... What, do, what do you think about this story? Well, I think there's, uh, um, I too have lost some friends in Miami that have, um, Overdosed, uh, Rob. Can you pull up that, that that graph? I think there's a few things going on right here. You could see that it really, boom, takes off around 2010, right? Which was right around the time when social media started blowing up. So, you know, the 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 you know what's the what's the term when you um, can you put up the chart for the audience, yeah. Jorge or Eric? Go ahead. What's the term when you uh, the fear of missing out, FOMO? I think social media has a major pro uh, has been a major factor of this. If you can just, you know, what do they say? Like the most dangerous people in the world right now are lonely, sexless men sitting in their basement, so to speak. And if you are just home on your phone and everyone out there is living their best life and you're just by yourself and you're a 16-year-old kid, 22-year-old kid, 24-year-old guy, whatever it is, and everyone's having a great time and you're home alone and you're doing some sort of drug by yourself, I think social media has led to that. And then I think what is even worse as you can see, it was trending upward, and then since COVID, it has just skyrocketed. And that's sad, because what you don't hear people saying is, get the hell out of your house, exercise, go hang out with friends, be a human, get out there, like, thank you. And you don't hear people talking about that. You hear people saying, you know, take the pill, take the jab, get, you know, get surgery, quick fixes. No, like... You know, one of the things that I give you major credit for, Lincoln on leadership, is 
No, we're not all fucking working remote. We're going to be around each other and we're going to be amongst each other. We're going to create a culture. We're going to have teamwork. We're going to hold each other accountable. And I think from, for, for young people out there, there's just this, you know, lack of friendship and a lack of togetherness. And even if it's in school, that's fine. But then you go home and you go on your iPad and you're alone. And you don't know what kind of thoughts are going through people's heads when they're home, alone, in front of a screen. And I think it's incumbent on parents. I think it's incumbent on teachers. I think it's incumbent on friends. I think it's incumbent on family to just check in on people that you think may have a problem and even kids that you don't have a problem. And I think this is, a, this is an American issue that we need to, uh, to tackle. And, and, it's, it's such, it's I think such, that's a great and, point. And Pat, I don't, I want to make one, one, one quick point not to cut you off. I, I like that they, they're using poisoning because I don't think your friends, Adam, like mine, they didn't OD. They didn't sit there and shoot up. My yeah. friends were poisoned because this girl got whatever. They got the drugs from whoever. Yeah. That shit was poisoned because they weren't sitting there. They did one bump of cocaine and they were all dead because fentanyl, the, the, the amount that fits on the top of this can kill your yeah, ass. So I, I, I don't think it's OD. You bring up a really good point. I would like to know because I've lost friends for from overdoses right mm -hmm. they we know that they had problems they were partying and and we all i mean show of hands if you know somebody that has passed away from some sort of overdose this is an american problem that we're all dealing with so the poisoning i think is one small percentage of it i'd like to know the stats on that mm -hmm. i don't know too many people are like i don't do any drugs boom i died yeah. i think a lot of it is like this collective drip 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 boom now you've just overdosed so it's, it's a sad situation that we need to tackle. What you bring up about social media, I think, is really important. The, uh, the irony of the election of, of Donald Trump happened at a time. Remember when we were talking about Facebook? We were worried about the addiction of kids. And then as soon as the election happened, we were worried about Facebook, about Russian interference and everything like that. There was a dialogue that was going on in the United States about how kids were being hyper addicted to social media and how there were whistleblowers inside Facebook that said, you know, we've kind of programmed it this way to keep you in, to keep you chasing likes, yep. that your, your self worth was, I, was connected to your social measurement measured by how many people like you. You had to be crazier, more outrageous, the makeup, whatever you were doing had to be more, more, more to get the likes. And that kind of stopped and went to the side. And then we had hearings on, okay, you social media guys, how do we get the orange man elected? What happened here? And it moved to that. And, you know, um, I went to a movie recently, and both my wife and I, anybody see the uh, Dove Soap commercial in the movie where the, the lady's talking to her daughter and they're talking about the risk of social media and everything like that? I think, I think this dialogue has to consider, be considered because I could call that the Zuckerberg line because why are you taking the drugs? Why are you dropping these tabs? What is so necessary about partying and doing it? You're getting poisoned by the drug you're taking, but why is it that you're turning to do that? And I, I happen to think social media is a big part of so, it. So uh, a Social Dilemma is a documentary that, uh, how many of you guys watch the documentary Social Dilemma? Got a lot of people thinking, talking, all this stuff. But you know, I will tell you this. Yesterday, we're doing a Elite Mastermind. And one of my favorite guys, you guys know who he is, uh, 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 he's asking questions saying, you know, I'm afraid uh, this happening to me. I'm afraid of making this decision. What if this goes wrong? What if at 70 I work hard, I build my company, but nothing happens and this, 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 that. I said, why is it for the last three years, every time I talk to you, you always come from a place of fear? And he says, I don't know. I said, uh, do you believe in God? He says, ah. Eh. As he says, I'm in, uh, you know, I'm in this country where it's the number one country in the world for atheists. I said, okay. I said, do you go to church? He says, I don't go to church. I said, what do you think about faith? He says, nah, not really. I'm not big on it. So I said, I'm going to recommend a book to you. I don't know if you're going to read it or not, but I highly recommend you read it. I said, let me tell you what I noticed that I want you to be thinking about. He says, because when I watch you, I watch how hard you work and how many things you're doing, but how come you don't seem stressed out? and you're just kind of enjoying the process, you got a wife, you got four kids, you're running these businesses, all this other stuff, how come you don't seem like you're overwhelmed, like you're just kind of going with the flow? I said, dude, it's only because I truly believe someone's got my back. And by the way, I'm not here, you, you will rarely ever hear me talk about my faith, but I think there's a few different things. Peer pressure is a good thing if it's the right peers. Peer pressure is a bad thing if it's the right wrong peers. 
We need better peer pressure. The right peer pressure forces you to make better decisions because you don't want to let down to people in your community. There was a form of a peer pressure this morning when we were having a meeting back there. It's between us, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Peer pressure is a good thing. I think people need to start spending more time in churches. I think whatever you practice, go do it. This goes back to the clip we talked about with Robert Downey Jr. and Mel Gibson the other day about the fact that, how many guys have seen the whole Robert Downey Jr. and Mel Gibson where he says, the reason why I brought Mel Gibson here is because years ago when I had nothing going on and I was an alcoholic, Mel came up to me and, well, I couldn't pay the bills. I couldn't pay rent. I couldn't, we can't play this because the music. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. He gave me a job, and that job put a roof over my head. And I asked him, I said, how can I ever pay you back? Because, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is not blown up. He says, he told me, go find your faith. He says, Mel never told me which faith. He just said, go find your faith, whatever that faith may be, and it starts with responsibility. Robert Downey Jr. is happily married, quiet, low-key. You don't see him at the clubs, any of that stuff. And to me, one of my favorite, I don't know if you guys like this guy, I love Robert Downey Jr.'s acting, how he is, his story, underdog, redemption, any of that stuff. And he says, later on, when you go through this, pass this down to somebody else. So a lot of these drugs that you're seeing, we can blame social media, we can blame all of that stuff. People are uncomfortable talking about taking people to go to church, go into a faith-based environment, and having the right people around you. The better the peers you have around you, better community you're a part of, you're going to perform better. When I, when I was around other guys, and at one point I was a bodyguard. Most people don't know this story. If you really know this story, you really follow our content. I've only told the story one other time. I was a bodyguard for a Colombian guy. And he didn't sell baseball cards. When you're from, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... So one day we go out, and I'm hanging out with these guys. First of all, we're having the time of our lives, just so you know, because Colombians, they know how to party. But, but this Colombian guy was a very well-known Colombian guy in L.A. You don't need to know who he is, but he was a very well-known mm -hmm. Colombian guy. And I was a very well-known, you know... Tough guy. Tough guy. Not a tough guy, but I would say I was a very well-known guy that I could handle myself in pressure-type situations, however way you want to define that, right? Yeah. So we meet, we go out, all of a sudden I'm on a... a Yacht in Marina del Rey, and there's a mountain of um, this white mountain, you know, if you want to call whatever you want to call this white mountain. And he says, we have to, this guy owes us $100,000. I'm like, so that's why I'm here? Yeah. Great. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> so obviously we collect $100,000, but here's the point. <laughs> While this whole thing is over with, I go back in the car and I know what I did that night, like with the people we're hanging out with. I'm like, dude, this is the wrong crowd to be around. Do you know if I stay in that community for two more weeks, three more weeks? The guy goes to jail, by the way. If I'm there for three more months, no value attainment. I don't have my four kids. I will never meet Patrick. I will never meet Dylan. I will never meet Senna. I will never meet Brooklyn. I will never meet these wonderful people in my life. I will never meet Mario. I would never meet Tom. I would, ne I would never. You're one stupid Decision away if you have the wrong pressure peers around you. You get in the right environment where they're pressuring you to improve your marriage, pressuring you to be a better father, pressuring you to be a better friend, pressuring you to be a better person financially. Then one day you wake up and you're like, okay, great. This is fantastic. We've done okay. We're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw up. This doesn't mean just because you have faith, you're going to walk on water. But I think we need more of that today. That's all I'm talking about. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.